What is up, guys? Welcome back to Season 4, Week 4 of the NPL Miners. This week we are taking on the Carney Hobo, creator of the Battle Area server where we all play our games, and his Vancouver Stealth Rocks. And uh, let's go over his team really quick. He has a pretty threatening team, to me, honestly. Uh, he's got a Landorus T, which is a Zemon, uh, which, in my opinion, is one of the most fearsome Pokemon in Draft League format now, uh, this generation. And uh, I had to prep heavily for that thing. Alongside that, he also has a Raikou, a Breloom, Empoleon, Yuxi, Pangoro, Snorlax, Avalug, Mega Beedrill, Toxapex, Gothitelle. Now, uh, two mons that I were I was 100% sure were coming were going to be Lando T and Avalug, because Avalug is one of his best checks to some of my offensive threats. Uh, it takes on my Salamence to some extent and can revenge it with uh, Avalanche. It takes on my Bulu if it's not banded. It takes on just a lot of stuff. So I had to uh, I had to prep in consequence for that thing. And uh, so here's the team. We have Mamoswine, Choice Scarf once again. This is the second time I think I'm bringing Choice Scarf out of three times that I've brought Mamoswine. Vastia has got Earthquake, Knockoff, Ice Shard, and Icicle Crash on it now. Uh, decided to go with an Adamin set because with the speed that you see, the 180, uh, I am able to outspeed his um, his base 115, which is Raikou. Uh, this thing is mainly coming for Raikou because I don't want to lose to that thing. As you can see, the rest of my team is pretty weak to it if it's a Calm Mind variant, and uh, I don't want to auto-lose to it. So, Namaswine is my check to that. Of course, we are running Thick Fat. Uh, Knockoff is there specifically for Yuxi because it's one of his best switch-ins. I want to get rid of its item if, poss if possible. Uh, same thing with Snorlax. If I can get rid of uh, like a Figgy Berry uh, as it comes in, then that's great. Uh, Avalug's Leftovers, Toxapex's Black Sludge, uh, Gothitelle I can two-hit KO with Knockoff if it's not fully defensive. So uh, there is that. So Knockoff's a, a pretty spammable move. Ice Shard is there to be able to revenge the Lando. I am faster than a non-Scarf Breloom. I'm faster than uh, Scarf um, Adamant Breloom as well. So I don't need to worry about Mach Punch too much, and I can just Ice Shard it. Um, and of course, uh, Earthquake is there mainly for Empoleon, Snorlax, Mega Beedrill, uh, Toxapex, uh, Snorlax, I said already, uh, Pangoro, all of those things, and mainly Raikou, that was the big thing. Next up we have Grandina, so this thing has been putting in a lot of work for me uh, lately. And uh, this set is really interesting, as you guys can see, we're a Moxie set with no attack investment. That's because our only attacking move is Outrage. Uh, I've got Hidden Power Ice on there because it hits Lando and Breloom for super effective dam uh, damage. And I've got Fire Blast because his only two checks, two Salamence, if it sets up, are going to be Lando T and Avalug. And I can hit both of those for super effective damage. With the Expert Belt, I can kill Avalug after rocks easily with Fire Blast. Even before rocks, I have a really good chance to. Uh, if it's not max special defense, which it wouldn't be against me more than likely. And uh, even a defensive Lando T after rocks goes down to Hidden Power Ice from Expert Belt. Uh, on Salamence with this nature, with Rash. Uh, I've decided to go Rash and put a little bit more into defense so that I could take uh, potentially a Stone Edge if rocks aren't up. Uh, I could take Pangoro's Fighting Move. I can take Snorlax's Body Slam or Return. Um, pretty much everything, ex even, uh, well, the main thing was Mega Beedrill, actually. The, re the reason that I beat it exactly like this is that this uh, HP and defense spread gives me the best chance to live Adamant Mega Beedrill's Poison Jab after Stealth Rocks, I have something like a 93% chance. So uh, that's really, really strong because if he doesn't poison me, then I just get off all my hits. And that's the reason I'm not running Life Orb. Otherwise, it would be Life Orb, and I'd swap out Fire Blast or Flamethrower for the chance to hit uh, rather than the chance to miss. Uh, and of course, the speed on there, the 286, uh, is enough for what was it again? B Drill. Mega B Drill, uh, not. Timid, Jolly, Jolly, that's what I'm looking for. Uh, max speed, Jolly, Beedrill at plus one, I outspeed. And uh, I also outspeed a lot of his Adamant Mons if he wants to run like Lando Adamant, I outspeed that. Uh, if he runs uh, max speed or close to max speed, Yuxi, I can outspeed that for whatever reason if he's running that. Um, and just mainly a lot of things on his team. Empoleon's an issue to this thing because I don't have Earthquake. Uh, I initially had Earthquake over Outrage, but I decided Outrage is a better idea because it hits more of his team neutrally across. I'm not going to worry about one Mon, which is Empoleon, when I have like three other things to deal with it, mainly um, Tapu Bulu, uh, Cobalion, and Mamoswine, so there's no point. I'd, I'd much rather run Outrage, that way I can sweep through. Uh, and Moxie, of course, uh, once if his Lando comes in uh, as IDD, gets a minus one, and dies to HP Ice, I still go back up to plus one. So my Outrage is still going to be hitting as hard. Uh, of course, the lack of attack investment is obviously going, going to 
um, put me out of range of being able to Oko certain things. Uh, like, let's say, Pangoro, if it's got a lot of uh, HP investment, his Snorlax might avoid a two-hit KO if it's mainly defensive. Uh, so those things I'm a little bit worried about, but not too much. So I should be able to chip them down throughout the game, especially that I'm running Toxic Spikes, as you guys are going to see very soon. So next up, we've got Tapu Bulo, and Choice Band is actually really good against him. So my idea is, if his Tox Effects comes... It more than likely brings Toxic Spikes, because that deals with my Mega Blastoise really well, my Victini, my Mamoswine, it chips down my Bulu, like, it, it, it's really, really good against my team. My Umbreon especially, like, that's the big thing. If he can get a, a Poison off on my Umbreon without receiving a Poison back, that's huge for him. So, uh, if Bulu comes in on one layer of T-Spike after Toxic Effects has gotten it up, and if he Scalds, I can't get burned. So, I'm, I'm poisoned, I'm good with that. I've got Woodhammer, Zen Headbutt is mainly there for, of course, uh, both the Mega Beedrill, uh, the Toxapex, as well as the uh, the Breloom. Uh, it's something that I can lock myself into late game if those three mons are still around, so that's that's really good to have. Uh, Horn Leech for recovery, of course, and Superpower is mainly there for the Snorlax, uh, in case I don't want to lose health going for Woodhammer and Horn Leech isn't doing enough, which it should, but... Superpower just uh, as an emergency measure. It also hits Empoleon a little bit harder than Horn Leech, so it's always a move that I can spam as well. Uh, now, Banded Adamant Woodhammer does indeed two hit KO Avalug after one Toxic Spike, even a max defense Avalug. One of the bulkiest physically defensive mons in the game gets two hit KO'd, so this thing is an absolute monster. Uh, and the speed on here is for. Um, it's for no speed something, I believe. What was it again? I'm not 100% sure. I think it's just a uh, slightly speed invested Uxie potentially, or no, it's max speed, uh, max speed Jolly Pangoro, if I'm not mistaken. It's, uh, I don't want to get caught with a gunk shot, so I'm outspeeding that thing by one. So that's what that's for. Uh, basically on all his slower mons, <coughs> excuse me, on all his slower mons, I come in and I claim a kill with Woodhammer. It's, it's pretty much guaranteed. Like Mega B Drill takes like 88%. Uh, so, and that's a four times resist. So that thing's going straight down. Uh, after rocks. So next up we have Eric the Weezing, uh, Shed Shell, of course, because he has a Gothitelle, and this thing is very important for checking his Mega Beedrill, otherwise I don't have a good response to it. So I definitely want this thing around. As you can see, I have a Cobalion, but he can constantly U-turn on it, and Cobalion's kind of important for other things on the team, as I'll explain later, but uh, we've got Will-O-Wisp for his Lando, of course. Uh, I expect him to run a Gravity a Supersonic Sky Strike set. So, uh, if that comes, then I'm able to Will-O-Wisp him, and then his Earthquake's not doing as much, especially if Grassy Terrain is up. That's another reason that I have Grassy Terrain. I'm a little bit weak to ground types, like his Lando, so Victini and uh, Cobalion are really going to appreciate uh, having the Grassy Terrain up. And so will Weezing if he does have Gravity. I have Toxic Spikes on there for uh, for his mainly his things that are grounded, of course, like Pangoro. Snorlax, if it doesn't have rest. Avalug gets chipped. I know he has two poison types, but I want to force them in as often as possible. Like, Toxpex, like I said, is a free switch into Bulu for me. It's a free wood hammer every time. So if I can get his poison types in, and Beedrill doesn't want to come in on Weezing, especially that I have Flamethrower, not only for Beedrill, but also for Breloom and for uh, mainly Avalug. That's the big thing, because that thing can come in on me and spin for free, almost. Uh, so I definitely want to be able to get a Flamethrower off on it. And then I can get back up my Toxic Spike, so... Uh, again, as, as long as I'm forcing in his poison types, I'm in a, co a comfortable position because his poison types don't do too much to me. I can I can check both of them and I can take advantage of them really, really well. So that's why I'm running Toxic Spikes. I want to force them in. Uh, next up, we have Victini. Set's a little bit weird, I know. Uh, it's minus attack plus special defense. Uh, I'm running this mainly so that I have a switch in to his... What was it again? Um, I think it's his Raikou. Oh no, it, the special defense is for Toxapex. It's another thing that takes advantage of Toxapex because it doesn't break a sub with a no uh, special attack Skull. So I can easily take his Skull that can set up a sub and then I have Psychic and Blue Flare. U-turn's a little bit weird on a set with Substitute, but because I'm special attacking, because I have only Blue Flare and Psychic, um, I don't uh, deal with Snorlax well and I want to be able to get out against it. So that's why I'm running U-turn. Uh, Substitute, of course, is there, like I said, for the Tox Effects, and this thing can deal a lot of damage to his team. Nothing really wants to take a burn. Uh, Pangoro doesn't, uh, Lando doesn't, Breloom dies to Blue Flare, 
Uh, and Polion doesn't want to get burned because it has the potential of getting to it KO'd by Blue Flare uh, after rocks. And then there's uh, Raikou that doesn't want to take it. Like, nothing on his team wants to take it, essentially. And Psychic deals with the Tox Specs, the only thing they can switch in. So, nice typing here. Uh, I'm finally remembering that Victini has a Psychic typing. If you guys remember my uh, NPL Majors Season uh, 5 run where I replaced Rob, I brought a Victini. Uh, no, I, I went went into Nidoqueen on a Victini, forgetting that it was a Psychic type, and Abe thought I was bluffing the, um, or I th thought I had the Pyapa Berry uh, to deal with his Victini, so he switched out, and that pretty much won me the game. But uh, yeah, that's uh, that's Victini. Uh, it's pretty straightforward, and the speed on there, I believe, is for uh, what is the speed for? I'm looking at his team max speed Gothitelle, so I can hit it off with blue flares, or if he tricks me, I can U-turn and then get in something that can deal with it. So. Yeah, that's, uh, that's Flare. And then we have Ren, Cobalion. So this thing deals with his team quite nicely, especially the things that, um, like, Bulu doesn't want around, essentially. Uh, mainly Lando, because I have Hidden Power Ice on there. The uh, the 20 Spatak investment, the, the reason I'm minus Spadef is so that uh, I can actually uh, two-hit KO Lando with Hidden Power Ice after rocks, even a fully defensive variant. And I'm faster than it. As you can see, I'm 310 speed, so I'm just faster than a max speed Lando. So if he decides to run max HP, max speed for some reason, uh, he could with Swords Dance, realistically. But uh, I can 2-hit KO it, so I'm dealing with that. Uh, this deals with Empoleon as a lead because I do have Sacred Sword. Sacred Sword, if you guys don't know, goes through any kind of stat changes. So for Snorlax, if it comes as a curse variant, nothing on my team deals with it except for Cobalion because I can Sacred Sword it through its defense boosts. Uh, I have Stealth Rock on there, of course, because rocks are going to chip away his team so nicely. Uh, mainly Mega Beedrill, Avalug, uh, Lando are the big things that I want to chip away. Everything else takes a constant amount of damage, but Avalug is, is one of the big ones. I want to be able to uh, break it down so that um, so that Salamence can sweep without having to click Fire Blast. Like, if, if I'm put in a position where I don't have to click Fire Blast, that's amazing for me. That's that's just incredible. So that's uh, that's the idea behind that set. Uh, Justified doesn't do much except that I can switch into Pangoro's knockoff if uh, if need be, because the rest of my team doesn't take it too well, but he could always predict and go for a fighting move. Uh, Pangoro was one of the, th the things that I did expect uh, to come heavily, so I uh, would be surprised not to see it. Uh, Gothitelle as well to trap my, uh, my Weezing. I can run a Taunt set and pretty much beat my Umbreon and my Cresselia if I decided to bring them, so uh, yeah. That's, uh, that's something that I'm really, really worried about. So I brought a team that wasn't as um, susceptible to Gothitelle trapping me. So that's uh, that's pretty much the set. Oh, also I have Volt Switch on there because that has super effective damage on Empoleon. Does about the same amount of damage as a Sacred Sword to an Avalog, surprisingly. And uh, also gets me out against Gothitelle if need be. Uh, super effective on uh, Toxapex. So uh, that's uh, that also comes into play with a little bit of special attack investment. It can net me kills where, where I otherwise wouldn't if I was min minus special attack. So that's pretty much the team. It's pretty straightforward. You guys get the concept. So let's hop right into the battle and we'll see how it goes. All right, guys. So here we are. And uh, we are against, of course, Carney Hobo. And as you can see, the Avalog is the first mod on his team. <laughs> like 100%. I knew that thing was coming. Uh, Lando T. Um, I'm uh, still fearing a gravity supersonic sky strike set that does a lot of work to my team I got to be very careful keep my mammoth swine alive so I can revenge it with ice shard uh, We've got uh, the mega bee drill that we're up against I, I figured that thing would come I saw one mock where mega bee drill and toxapex both came so uh, that was really good for me to take advantage of the uh, Of wheezing's toxic spikes to get in bulu uh, on toxapex He's got the Breloom. that is something that I kind of expected to come But I, I more so felt like Raikou was a better choice than Breloom. Just because Breloom is easily checked uh, by, say, Tapu Bulu if it doesn't carry Poison Jab. It's checked by Weezing, Mammoth Swine's Ice Shard, Victini's Blue Flare. So, like, uh, I, I don't completely agree with uh, Breloom. I think Raikou in that slot would have been better. Yuxi did come. I guess he needed a Rock Setter. because It was between Yuxi and Pangoro, I guess, because Pangoro also did put in a lot of work against my team. That Dark Fighting typing deals with my defensive core really nicely and can even deal with uh, Tapu Bulu because of its access to Gunshot. And, of course, he brought the Snorlax. That was something that I expected, but I do have answers to it, so... Uh, yeah, let's let's hop into it. Let's see how it went. I'll put this on normal and uh, I'm going to lead off with my Cobalion against his Yuxi. I want to get up rocks. He's going to do the same on this turn and uh, I have no business uh, staying in here. So I'm just going to Volt Switch out and what I'm actually going to do is bring in my Victini. Uh, even though rocks are up, 
Victini uh, can still put in some work against his team. I'm going to scout essentially to see if his um, Snorlax is thick fat. And I'm just going to go for a blue flare right here. I know he's got to be fearing the V create and he doesn't want his Uxie to take more damage because it's a very nice defensive check against things like Mamoswine. So I'm just going to fire off the blue flare. I do see that he is thick fat. Uh, now, blue flare, of course, has a 20% chance of burning. One of the main reasons why Victini runs it over anything else and the fact that it's 100% accurate, of course, and it's the most powerful fire move that it gets. So I'm going to U turn into Cobalion. Carney makes a very nice play and goes for the superpower. Now, his superpower is weakened, and I don't expect him to go for it again. I do expect him to switch, but I'm not going to overpredict this early in the game. So I'm just going to go for the Sacred Sword. My Cobalion is still healthy enough, and it can still get recovery from uh, Bulu's grassy terrain later in the game. And if grassy terrain is up, actually, fun fact, Adamant Lando doesn't kill me from here, so with Earthquake. So I'm going to Volt Switch out. Of course, Sky Strike would do the job. And I'm going to go back into Victini. Uh, on his Uxie again as he gets off a of Toxic. Now, Victini's pretty much useless in this game. It was really only here to take advantage of his uh, Toxapex and his Gothitel, both of which he didn't bring. So I'm going to Blue Flare there. I actually end up getting a crit, which is a little unfortunate for Carney. Uh, but a two, two Blue Flares would have taken him out regardless uh, of the crit, except now he's a little bit lower. So that's kind of bad for him. He's going to go into Snorlax. I'm going to Blue Flare again, try to get the burn. And like I said, guys, it's 20%. I do get it off. And uh, this Snorlax is now on a timer. However, his Snorlax does indeed have rest. I'm going to fire off a Psychic because it does a little bit more than Blue Flare. Uh, because he does have Thick Fat, of course. So Blue Flare's damage uh, output is cut in half. And um, he's going to get back up to full. Now, uh, on this turn, I do end up Psychicking. Now, I could have switched out. Uh, my Victini and kept it as fodder and just gone for a U-turn. The thing is, there was no real point because one, it was going to die to rocks and I don't have hazard removal. Two, uh, I don't want my Cobal Cobalion taking a sleep talk uh, superpower. That would be horrible. His Uxie is low enough to the point where I don't need to worry about it coming in on my Sacred Sword anymore because it'll die to the following Volt Switch. So I do not want my Cobalion taking more damage because now this Snorlax is fully alive and it's at full health. So I am going to Psychic. I'm going to bring this thing down to about 88% after its leftovers. And he doesn't reveal Sleep Talk. Now this is actually very important uh, for later in the game. I find out that he's not Sleep Talk, so this is going to... Uh, make it easier for me to switch things in like Cobalion into his Snorlax. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to go into Cobalion again, and I am going to fire off a Sacred Sword as he goes into his Uxie, and his Uxie is going to straight drop to this. Of course, it's at 9%, so uh, it goes down. doesn't matter how defensive it is. And uh, I'm back up to a nice 65%, so I can deal with some of his Mons. Now he's going to go Beedrill, and uh, of course I'm fearing Drill Run, and I still need this thing for Snorlax. So I'm going to make the most obvious play in the world and go into my uh, Weezing. And he's going to Agility. <laughs> and right here, I'm like, okay, there's no reason you run Agility on Mega Beedrill uh, when I have a Weezing and a Cobalion unless you're passing it into something. So I'm like, okay, he's going to Baton Pass. However, if he Baton Passes his speed out into the resting Snorlax, I could be in trouble. So... I'm going to prioritize actually getting up Toxic Spikes for the rest of his team first. But he passes it into Lando, and I'm like, okay. So this thing as a Supersonic Sky Strike set could be a big deal. As you can see, he goes for Gravity. This was one of the things that I was fearing was Gravity. But I'm like, okay, uh, he's Gravity, but I'm about to burn him. And uh, I don't want to switch in my Bulu, obviously, into a sky potential Sky Strike, because it will still do a lot of damage even though he's burned. Uh, and I know Weezing can take the Earthquake, but I still want Weezing for his Beedrill. So I calc it up, and the thing that actually takes uh, very minimal damage on my team from Lando's Earthquake at this point is Mamoswine, because Mamoswine's actually pretty physically bulky. It could take hits. So I'm going to switch out into Mamoswine, but it turns out he brought the special lander is set with earth power and i'm going to take 60 percent from that and that's actually a big deal because i'm not going to be able to switch into rocks as often uh, i only have two more rock switch ins as long as i don't get grassy terrain recovery so this is going to be bad now of course i have i'm not messing around with this threat um I'm going to Ice Shard, and he's going to bring in his Avalog. That's his best play, obviously. He can take any hit. Uh, now, in retrospect... No, he had an Agility up. So, uh, I'm just going to go for Ice Shard. Of course, he's going to get the opportunity to spin here. However, I do get back in my Cobalion. And Toxic Spikes aren't super important in this game, because he has the Beedrill to suck them up. His uh, Snorlax is asleep, and his 
Avalug is already poisoned. This is what I wanted. So, and his Lando, of course, is off the ground. So, uh, I'm not going to bother with uh, the fact that I don't have Toxic Spikes anymore, except a little bit later in the game, you're actually going to see that. But uh, I'm going to go for Sacred Sword on this Berloom, because I figured that it would try to predict my Bulu coming in. And I don't really need my Kobalion anymore, because I know that my Bulu can deal with his Snorlax to some extent, uh, because I've seen Rest, uh, but I haven't seen Curse. So, as long as he doesn't have a Curse up, I can deal with it. So I'm going to go into my Mamoswine, and once again, I'm just going to go for an Ice Shard on his Breloom, because I don't know if it's Adam and Scarf, I don't know what it is. I'm just going to go for an Ice Shard, and uh, of course, he has the option of Mock Punching me, so I don't want that to happen. Now, on his Snorlax, I'm going to go into Bulu. Uh, he's going to have another Sleep Turn, he's going to get Leftovers and Grassy Terrain Recovery. And I'm thinking, okay, well, I can just smack something with a Wood Hammer here, but he actually wakes up and goes for Protect. So this is actually a little bit bad, because his Snorlax is actually potentially out of if it's max defense uh, it's actually potentially out of range of my wood hammer just by a little bit like the min roll i think is 92 so he has a chance to live it but i figured that he'd want to keep his snorlax around so i'm just gonna go for the wood hammer try to get off as much damage on it as possible regardless and i end up killing the mega beedrill so no more toxic spike absorber which is cool um as my bulu is still sitting pretty healthy and he goes into breloom now i'm thinking Okay, um, I've seen Swords Dance, I've seen Mach Punch. I know that he is uh, not Scarfed. He's, he's, he's no type of Scarfed. So what I can do is I could one Hammer here, and it would knock him out. However, I know that Breloom gets Poison Jab, and I want to be careful with that because Poison Jab can mess me up. Not to mention that Bullet Seed can actually do a lot of damage in Grassy Terrain to me, despite the resist because it is Technician Boosted. So... I'm going to get out of here, and I'm going to go straight into my Weezing. I can deal with this Breloom relatively well, and I don't need my Weezing anymore. It was only here for Mega Beedrill, so uh, I can go into Eric, and I can fire off a Flamethrower, but he spores me. So he's revealed three moves, Mock Punch, uh, Swords Dance, and Spore. So I'm thinking he might not have Poison Jab at this point, so I might be able to sweep through with Bulu. Now he's going to go into Avalog, and I'm going to get the first turn Wake. However, I slept already for a turn, so this was the first turn that I could wake up. I went for a Will-O-Wisp, which didn't matter, so I could have woken up on the next turn. So, it doesn't make a huge difference, uh, and here I'm going to be able to get off a Flamethrower and prevent his spin, which is actually going to be huge, guys. It's, it's going to be enormous, uh, as it's going to deal a little bit more damage to the Breloom, a little bit more damage to the Snorlax. He now goes into his Lando. I'm actually just going to get up Toxic Spikes, because I want to ch chip away at the Breloom, and his Snorlax is now awake. So, if I get off two layers of Toxic Spikes, he goes for Earth Power, I'm like, yes, I can get off a second layer, his Snorlax will eventually be forced to rest, and that is exactly what I want, I just want it to rest. So he goes for Gravity here, this is cool, I go for Toxic Spikes, and uh, he's going to knock me out on the following turn with an Earth Power, he's not playing around with my Weezing anymore. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Mamoswine, because it's kind of the only thing that can revenge, the, uh, th uh, revenge this thing. now. Uh, I was worried about both. I only saw two moves, Gravity, Earth Power. So I don't know if he has HP Ice, which is very possible. I don't know if he has Sludge Wave, which he told me after that he did. Um, so I can't go into Bulu, because he can be faster than me and knock me out with a Sludge Wave. And I can't go into Mens, because I could get knocked out by, by an HP Ice. And my Mens is potentially not faster than this thing, because I only EV'd it to outspeed Mega Beedrill at plus one. If he's Jolly, he outspeeds me. I outspeed an Animate Lando, but or in his case, Modest. Um, but I don't outspeed a Timid Lando or a Jolly Lando, so I could end up going down to HP Ice, and that would be horrible for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Mamoswine, but as you can see, he still has the Snorlax, he still has the Breloom, and he still has the Lando. So I can click Ice Shard here. It's very simple to click Ice Shard. However, if he goes into Snorlax, that thing can get free setup. If it is Curse, I'm put in a horrible position because my Mamoswine can't switch into Rocks anymore. So I can't revenge this Lando with Ice Shard, and if he just so happens to be faster than both my Salamence and my Bulu, I lose. So I'm thinking, okay, this is a huge 50-50 right here, until I realize he gave me gravity, and I can click Earthquake on his entire team, and Breloom, after the rocks and the poison damage, is going straight down to this. So, I'm going for Earthquake, he goes to 4%, I'm not sure if it was a roll uh, where he could have lived it, but I got off the Earthquake, and what this is going to do is it's going to prevent Snorlax from setting up multiple times in front of me. I'm going to go for Earthquake, it does 41%, so with the toxic damage he can't afford to set up. 
So now I'm going to get the switch out into my Salamence, I believe, and I'm going to clean up this game with Salamence. Uh, because Salamence has been getting all the games, uh, uh, has been sweeping all the games, it hasn't died yet, so I'm gonna go for the, um, I'm gonna get, go for the Dragon Dance. Uh, I guess if he was Ice Punch, it could have been bad, but I think at this point I had seen all his moves, I'm not sure. I saw Protect, Rest, uh, Return, and I wasn't sure if he had Ice Punch or not, uh, but I think I, I might have seen the last move, I don't remember now, but he's going to go for the Protect. As I go for Outrage, he's going to switch out into his Lando. I'm gonna get the minus attack. I'm gonna go for another outrage. Uh, he reset my outrage by protect protecting. It never got the first hit off. And he's actually gonna end up doing the same thing again. He's gonna go for protect, except this time it's the second hit. So if I get confused, it could be kind of bad, but at the same time, I would have to hit myself multiple times and he would have to get off rests and curses, but he doesn't have sleep talk. So I would be okay. Uh, I'm just gonna go for Outrage, uh, again he goes for another Protect, I think he uh, got a double there and he reset me again, and he goes for another Protect, but at this point it doesn't matter, he would go down to Toxic anyway, and I'm gonna go for Outrage and I'm gonna knock out his Slurlax. Uh, Grandina picking up two kills in the end game. we get the 2-0 victory over Carney Hobo and his Vancouver Stealth Rocks. Uh, Salamence has not died yet, guys. Salamence has 7 kills, 0 deaths, uh, it is doing amazing this season, now here's a little unfortunate news. Um, I am leaving Miners, uh, a lot of you guys already know this, but I have been promoted into Majors. Uh, thankfully, finally I'm back, guys, I have been dying to to get back into Majors. I'm gonna be taking over for Togavoir, we're all gonna miss him. Uh, I messaged him personally and told him that uh, I didn't want to take his spot of all people, uh, because I, I really like Tog, we're really good friends, but um, unfortunately the, the spot opened up and I got it, or fortunately I guess you could say, so the team is no longer mine. Unfortunately this team, which has been doing so well, we are now 3-1, is no longer mine. The person that will be taking over for the Montreal Habsols is going to be Techno and the Carolina Panther Pantherians, I believe. He's uh, a good friend of mine in the community, uh, he, we met in the GOT in Season 1, he's a great player, I've always vouched for him as an amazing player, uh, and he made some transactions, and he got rid of Salamence, man, 7-0. Seven kills, zero deaths, and he got rid of it, and it was one of my Z-mons. So, uh, that's a little unfortunate, but the, the transactions that he made, actually, they're really solid. Like, I'll go over his team now. He's got Tabu Bulu, Victini, so he still kept those. He's now got, now got Kafagragus, Hippowdon, Mega Absol. So, he dropped, uh, he kept Umbreon, actually, so he still has two Dark types. Still got Cresselia. He got Manaphy as his Z-mon. Uh, still has Weezing and now has Hitmon top. So he still has a spinner. Uh, he has a magic bouncer, so that deals with some of the hazards. He no longer has a defogger, but I think uh, Hitmon top plus Victini is actually a pretty good combination because Victini normally fears physical attacks for the most part, and Hitmon top can deal with most of them because of uh, Intimidate. So I'm really looking forward to where he's going to take this team. I really like the Manaphy. Uh, I think he made the team even slower. <laughs> like, besides the fact that he now has Mega Absol, which is a little bit faster than, of course, Cobalion. Uh, everything else that he got is like slightly slower than what I had, so it's gonna be interesting to see what he does. I, I know he's got a lot of mons that he enjoys using. I know he loves the Mega Absol. Uh, I think he calls it uh, LA Devotee, which is a uh, Panic at the Disco song, so definitely go follow Techno, guys. Uh, I'm gonna replace my link in the description down below in all of the NPL links with Technos. Uh, go and subscribe to him, please go and go and check out his games, go and see where he takes the team. Uh, for all we know, he might end up being the champion this season. I did leave him with a 3-1 record, so I'm crossing my fingers and hoping uh, that he can carry it through all the way. And uh, we are up to, into majors now, so uh, next week's upload is going to be on Sunday, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and it's going to be, or this week's upload rather, and uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be for majors. And the first person we take on is Verd. Uh, somebody that I've actually never played in draft league format, I don't believe, not even in the NBA when you replace somebody for us uh, way back when. So that's going to be interesting. Uh, we're going to take him on for the first time. And uh, Toke's team, not my type of team. I made a couple of transactions to make it a little bit more to, to my liking, but it's not my type of team. So, uh, And he left me with a 1-4 record. So I'm not, I don't think I'm going to do too hot this season, uh, but we will, we do have a guaranteed spot for majors next season. So that's something to look forward to. We are confirmed for NPL Season 8 uh, of the Majors. So this was our Miners run. I think we were doing really well. We only lost to our Kryptonite, which was Jar. We lost uh, with that horrible comfy sweep, uh, which was a 4-0. And then we pulled it back and we just started 
demolishing people. So uh, I had another two very difficult matchups coming up in week five and week six, which were Ace uh, and Andrew. Andrew, who has unfortunately left us, and I think he was replaced with uh, Turk. Uh, Turkey in the Toronto Luxrays, also from the, D the GOT. And... Um, yeah, so uh, I'm, I'm glad I had to, I, I could avoid those matchups. Let's see how Techno does in them. Uh, like I said, guys, go and check them out in the description down below. Sorry for the little rant at the end here, but of course, this is my last game in Miners, so I have to I have to talk about it a little bit. But yeah, that's it, guys. We do get another win, and uh, let's hope we can carry on this momentum into the Majors and uh, keep doing well in Pokemon. So that's going to be it, guys. As usual, make sure to like the video down below if you did enjoy. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I will catch you guys later.